this is one of those transition days where you've got a lot of work to do, a lot of saws to work on, and I need to mix that in with some stuff I want to do for myself. But to give you an idea of the variety of things that are on my plate for the day, how about this one right here? That is a Husqvarna 281. Okay? And I want to get it running today if I can. I got this one in a trade, in kind of an odd trade, but basically we were having trouble this year with uh, water for the livestock. So I sold a bunch of cows and I traded a bunch of cows. And in the results of the trade, I ended up with a John Deere 2750 tractor and this saw right here, 281. The guy said he's too old to start it anymore. It's just been rebuilt. Wow. I can see what he was talking about. And it just needs to get run, is my guess. The 281 is kind of like the little brother to the 288. The 288 is, is one that gets a lot of online press. It's one of the better saws that Husqvarna ever built. And the 281 is the same basic saw that has a, a slightly smaller bore. I would say that the 281 is the same as a, an 820 is to a 920 John Thread where it's based in the same chassis, this larger sibling, the 288, has all the different features, runs really strong, they all do, and uh, just has a slightly smaller bore. This one has been rebuilt. Bob seems to think that usually when they're rebuilt, they're brought up to 288 specs. I don't know. That's something we're going to look at tomorrow. Today I'm just going to try to get it to run and oil and see if I can use it for tomorrow blocking firewood. Be nice to put that into the roster for, for a day or so, wouldn't it? How about this saw right here? This is a Husqvarna 575. Now, I'm kind of doing a series on the 576 and one of the questions that seems to come up often is, is what's the difference between the 575 and the 576? A lot is the answer. Let me see if I've got the cylinder available. Here is a 576 cylinder. And the transfer ports are fairly close together, which means the cylinder and the cases are designed for this layout of the transfers. The 575 shares a lot of the basic design concepts and features, some of the covers, but boy it's hard to tell. Let me see if I can get some light in here. Well, maybe you can see. Let me zoom up. But where the transfer is dropped down into the case is further apart. So even though there's a lot of similarities, the transfers in the 575 come down to like in this area right here versus like this. So the cylinder and cases are obviously going to be different. These aren't autotunes, but they are true X Torques or some of the earlier X Torque designs. This one's dirty, and what happened to it is it got dropped and did some fairly substantial damage to the handle. So I got a new handle for it. One last little note. And this is one of those things that's been a a bone of contention online for the longest time. And that is, you know, how much heat do you put on K 
cases when you're doing things like bearing removal. Now, what this is right here is a case splitter for the 575-576 series of saws. And the reason why it has to be external like this is compared to that big clamp looking thing you see for 372s is because the 575-576 have got full, full circle cranks. Basically the cranks have stuffers in them so there's really no way to reach down inside and, you know, with this because it won't fit down in there because the crankshaft has the, the, uh, uh, the stuffers. So you got to pull it from the outside. Now, the directions offer some clues as to what Husqvarna thinks is a suitable practice for changing bearings. Okay, the directions say remove carburetor space bottom by unscrewing four bolts. Bingo, we know how to do that. If necessary, remove the seal on the flywheel side. Remove the six bolts on the flywheel side, you know, the case screws. We know that. And here's where it gets interesting. Fit tool as shown in figure three and remove the crankcase half on the flywheel side. So they say do the flywheel side first. Remove the crankcase half on the clutch side. Notice how the tool is, is attached to the uh, bar studs. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Do as follows. Remove the oil filler cap, common sense. Heat the relevant crankcase half to 200 degrees Celsius. Okay, not Fahrenheit, Celsius. Use protective gloves and press the bearing out from the crankcase half. All right, let me see if it's, you can see that. All right, now, if you bring out your handy dandy Celsius to Fahrenheit converter, 200 degrees Celsius is 392 degrees Fahrenheit. 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now why is that interesting? Let me turn this thing off. Um, it's interesting for a lot of reasons. First of all, I don't, I don't heat mine up that much. I haven't, uh, I really haven't had to, okay? But the reason why it's interesting to me is because, let me zoom this back out. The reason why it's interesting to me is when I ordered an OEM bearing for the case that I'm going to repair, this is what I got. You look at this bearing really close if you can see it. Let me see if it shows up. That is a nylon caged bearing with a seal. That's almost 400 degrees on a nylon caged bearing. So my 300 degree, 250 to 300 degree uh, case temperatures are well below what's going to damage those bearings, at least if you go by their instructions. All right, while we're into what's on the bench. Here's the rest of the parts I have for that saw. I've got a seal. I've got another bearing. Whoa, look at that. Nice new top end. Huh? Very, very nice looking casting. Well, I'm not going to do a whole lot of grinding on this thing. It's just too nice. I'm really, 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 really not comfortable enough on these to really do a whole lot and it's expensive stuff. I don't want to mess up a nice saw. Um, the kind of things I will do is muffler mods and I will increase the intake duration some. That makes perfect sense based on the size of the intake port that I'm seeing. They're tiny. I can tell you the more I see of the 576 for those mid-size saws, the more I like them more than I like the 372X Torque. 
And I think, you know, to summarize my thoughts, is it's obvious to me that the 576 was designed from the ground up to be what it is. It's obvious to me that the 372 X Torque is sort of a stopgap design to try to get through a marketing problem. You know? Um, if you look at the way the cylinder matches up to the cases, the cases were designed for the old style cil cylinders, and the new style cylinders are sort of cobbed together to make it work. I, I mean, it works, they run good, some people like them. So when you look at the dealer shelf, and I see the, the 576 is for like maybe $50 more than a 372. Uh, guys, <laughs> it's worth it in spades. It's worth it $50 every day of the week in terms of what I'm seeing from the inside. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but wow. You know, these things are just solid. All right, back to the show. This is coming apart, right? And when I do things like this for the first time, I like to observe and just take note of some things. So, for example, notice that there's a little recess. That seal is recessed in there about 30 thousandths. And I also notice that there's the bearing surface on the crank comes out projected by about 90 thousandths. So whether it's 30 thousandths or not, it's not critical. But I always find it's probably best to replicate, you know, what the factory has done. Usually works out better. But notice that the seal is on the bearing. And also notice that it's flush. It's flush to here. So when I drop that new bearing in there, I've got to make sure that it gets all the way up to this, this shoulder right here. But not so hard that it breaks that shoulder off, which is always a trick. The reason I'm taking this apart is even though um, turning the crank feels kind of smooth, is there some metal chunks? Eh, maybe it's not so smooth. There were some metal chunks that were coming out of that crank case. And that usually means something has failed on the bearing or something like that. And even though it turns smooth now, um, just the fact that I've got those metal pieces out of there and um, there's nothing in the piston or the top end that could generate that means either ingested something or that there's something failing in the crank case itself. And it doesn't appear to be the rod bearing. It's got to be one of the mains. This little gun here has a lot of torque. You've got to be a little, little bit careful. You just break them loose first. So they come out in the usual way. Nothing special about these. Notice they're all full thread, and I can tell by the way they sound when they drop, they are hard. Now, this puller, it looks like you use the, the case screws themselves, and it looks like there's two points to screw into, here and here. Of course, my first question is they don't say anything about heating up the case. My instinct says that's probably a good idea to heat the case up. But who am I? There it goes. So much for my concerns. That came apart pretty easy. Ah, uh, yes. It's kind of far yeah, see, that's really rough. I'm not seeing parts in there, but man, is that rough, that bearing right there. I mean, it's really rough. So, it obviously needs to come out. 
So let's crank on this a little bit. Just make it nice and firm, I guess. And see whether or not the Husqvarna tool Yeah, it pushed right out. Look at that. Wow. Which means it'll go right back in. Both these bearings are just really, really rough. I guess what I'm going to do now is disobey Husqvarna because there's no way I'm going to heat those up to 400 degrees. That's more than I would do. But we are going to heat these up and push those bearings right out of there using some, you know, redneck techniques. You know, I want you to look at something. Looking for places to hop up a little bit and in particular always looking for the bottom of the transfers and I really don't know if the camera's going to pick up. There really isn't much you can do with that on this saw, you know. The other thing I always look at is um, the bottom of the flange here and how far away from the, from the case it is for no base gasket builds. I've got no base gasket in there, and there's easily 40 thousandths clearance. So the no base gasket build concept probably works just fine. And as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to take a lot off the base of the cylinder. So to drop the cylinder um, without risking the integrity of this part of the casting, therefore a sealing surface, I think the removal of the base gasket is actually the better approach. It really is. Oh, by the way, notice that like the 372, the bolt holes or screw holes for the oil pump go all the way into the crankcase. So you've got to make sure that when you put the oil pump on that you've got a good seal with those threads. I'd use 1194 to seal the threads because that's an air leak waiting to happen, just like 372s. I don't really have a slick way of popping those bearings out other than just using... You know, the tried and true redneck techniques I've used on other saws. But interestingly enough, this socket right here is an inch and a half. And it just sets right nicely in that groove. Isn't that sweet? It's almost like it was designed for that. And so I feel pretty good. I could press that out, I suppose, with my, with my press. Um... I don't know. I think I'm just going to tap it out. Heat the case up with the heat gun and see if I can't get it to tap right out of there. There you go. Look at that. That makes me happy. I've been on the hammer kick for a while, so I'm going to continue that approach. Because it's something that everybody can do. Not everybody has a press. You know? See if it'll come out. Yeah. All right. I want you to notice that at this temperature, it says 250 degrees. That bearing popped right out. I did not have to go to the 200 degrees Celsius. I went to 250 degrees. Fahrenheit and it popped right out of there. What I've been saying all along, I don't know, people pay attention to my channel, is I look for like a 200 degree, 250 degree differential, somewhere in that range. And this is yet again proven that to be a realistic set of numbers, you know. All right, let's see if this one goes the same way. See, that just, they came out real easy. So the 250 degree number, Fahrenheit, it's fine. By the way, one of the steps that I do when I do cases like this, and the wife probably won't like it, but I use 
I use hand soap and, and a brush and I scrub the heck out of those cases before I start thinking about putting them back together. Like the other saws, it seems like 215 is the magic number. 215, 220 degrees, and that bearing just drops right in. Very, very little effort. degrees roughly okay both in this one took just a slight bit more effort but not enough difference to matter so I guess now let's clean them up and pull the crankshaft together and you know get the bottom end done so let me get the other side all right let's move this along and I think what I'll do is I'll take part one and end it with these cases back together, bearings replaced, you know, sealed up, ready to go. And like usual, just a thin film of 1184. I do that everywhere. You know, I've had this conversation on video before. It's possibly this is overkill. But on saws like the old style, uh, 562, where it has the five instead of the six screw cases, you know, it doesn't have that case screw right underneath the, the muffler. Um, doing this is the difference between success and failure, because if you don't do this, it'll leak on the 562. On this saw... I really don't have enough experience to know if it's an issue. I do notice that like the 562, they span quite a distance up here. But unlike the 562, they're not as, um, I guess the right word is interested, I was going to use the word anal, about retaining heat, which I think is one of the Achilles heels of that saw series, is their desire to to capture the heat. You know, let this gel just a little bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna pull this crank half in. Oh, it just set right in. Should be getting to the end here pretty soon. There it is. Okay. No strain or pain. Gasket's nice and, and uh, gelled up. Let's get the other half. Let's set the gasket on there. Got the locating pins in and this uh, Rebond product is skinned up pretty nice. It's about ready to squeeze now. And when you're done, the crank will be, it'll just be nice and easy and no stress free. Let me get the screws in, and I don't know, 
I will decide if this video is done or not. God, I've got so much work to do. I've got to put that seal in there. Let's put those case screws in.